San Antonio starts right now. New evidence Russia is gearing up for a new offensive. A Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington coming up where Putin is moving his troops. Outside with live cam, lots and lots of humidity hovering right around 70 degrees. There were sprinkles on the truck in my driveway this morning, and there are actually a few echoes on radar. We'll leave the details to meteorologist Justin Horn. Good morning, everybody. Whew, we made it through Fiesta weekend. <laughs> it is Monday. It is April 11th. Hi, Steph. Hi, good morning. morning. It was fun, though. It was, it was a good. blast. I can't believe it's already come and gone after Battle Flowers Friday. I know. It went by really quick, and the weather worked out, but now we need the rain. We do. We really, really need the rain. Of course, we had a weekend of wildfires here in our viewing area out towards uh, JBSA Camp Bullis, and that has been an ongoing fight. Justin is in for Mike this morning and has an update on hopefully Hopefully more of that stuff. Yes, uh, you know, it's like Mother Nature knew. You keep talking, I'm gonna adjust your collar for you. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> this is what happens when you rush out here. Uh, I, I, Mother Nature knew that Fiesta was over with because we got some rain last night. It was loud for some of us. I got a wake up call right around midnight. We got some storms moving in. And now those have moved off to the east. We have a few more echoes, as Mark mentioned, working west east around the Austin area. I think we're probably going to have a break and today for the most part should be fairly quiet, but we do have to keep our eye on the radar. If anything develops could have the potential to be strong. Here's a look at the 24 hour rainfall estimates, and these are just estimates from the radar. And I know it's kind of hard to see there on your screen, but we had a corridor right here, northern Bear County that stretched from well, northern Medina County through northern Bear County towards Seguin. We picked up about an inch in some spots, but also noticed right there around Camp Bullis. That's where we got some rain last night. Thank goodness, not a lot, but some and any little bit helps with these uh, grass fires that we have going on up there. So uh, some very welcome rain. The airport did pick up about two tenths of an inch last night with the rainfall. Temperatures 70 degrees at San Antonio right now. 69 Hondo, 67 Kerrville, 68 in Uvalde. It's a warm, humid morning. We've got a lot of cloud cover. 64 Bernie stage 68 right now in comfort and 72 down there in Castroville. Our forecast for today is going to be cloudy early. We'll see, start to see a little bit of sun as we go later into the afternoon. Temperatures warm into the 80s. We're going to go 88 this afternoon. Just a 10% chance of rain. Rain chances do increase tomorrow, and there's a threat for some strong storms. Then beyond that, we've got more fire danger to talk about. It's a very busy week. We're going to have much more on that coming up here in just a bit. Guys. Thank you very much. Well, back to that big fire, that grass fire that broke out at JBSA Camp Bullis Saturday is still burning. Numerous agencies are still working hard to get that fire under control. And at last check, fire is 50% contained. That's according to the Texas A&M Forest Service. John Paul Braha shows us what crews are using to fight that blaze. Smoke can be seen for miles, regardless of where you live in Bear, Kamau, or Kendall County. If you look up and towards JBSA Camp Bullis, you get the idea of the magnitude and size of the fire crews are working. Now you don't know if it's a mile or 10 miles. And in this case, it was probably like 11 miles, but it was still a lot of smoke in the backyard. I live uh, in Fair Oaks, so I'm not too far away, and I was uh, worried that we might get uh, evacuated. And I have some friends that did get evacuated. It's pretty scary. According to base officials, after more than 24 hours, there are no injuries and no damages to nearby structures. They estimate 2,800 acres of land have been burned. They do not believe it'll exceed further than Camp Bullis grounds. All service members who live on site have been relocated, and evacuation recommendations for roughly 150 people in Kamau County have been lifted. This fire did break out on the demolition training grounds and because of that crews are having to attack it from the air and the ground. The munition areas and the demolition that type of, type of sites those those have hazards associated with it so we don't want to put our firefighters in direct uh, contact on theirs. Deputy Chief Scott Ridnauer explained they're using aerial water drops over the training grounds and firefighters on the outside are working containment. The cause of the fire is still under investigation, but we're told an authorized training mission was taking place when the fire started Saturday around 2.30 in the afternoon. At this time, point in time, we can tell you that there, the source of the fire happened during a training evolution that was being conducted on the field. So once we get further information on that and we can make it a city, we can find out the exact source. We don't want to speculate or assume anything. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. A man now in custody after an hour long standoff. The incident began Saturday night at a home on Star Glade near Petranco Road. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says a 22 year old man barricaded himself inside the home after getting into a physical altercation with another family member. 
Now, the sheriff also says he was armed during that altercation. Yesterday, negotiators were called to the scene after reports of a man being in the backyard of the home with a weapon. And the negotiators and SWAT team were able to make contact with the man and take him into custody. Now on to the war in Ukraine. Russian forces moving closer to the east where the Ukrainian president expects a renewed assault. Meanwhile, a show of solidarity from one of the European Union's leaders. ABC's Ike Jachi has a story. This morning, evidence of a renewed Russian effort to control the east. New satellite images showing a massive military convoy of tanks, mobile artillery, and other vehicles eight miles long. It's going to Kharkiv, a city that's already faced weeks of Russian shelling, leaving residential neighborhoods completely leveled. Military analysts say Russia is preparing for a major offensive in the coming days, driving from territory they've already controlled in the east westward. In his daily address, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says, we are preparing for their actions. We will respond. In his address, Zelensky continues to urge world leaders to keep the supply of military aid and funds flowing. Speaking to CBS, Zelensky said he was grateful for President Joe Biden and the military aid, but he's not confident that his country will get everything it needs, saying he provided a list of needs to President Biden a long time ago, saying the outcome of the war depends on him. Meanwhile, a show of solidarity over the weekend. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson visiting Zelensky in Kyiv. And this morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin appointing a new commander in Ukraine. General Alexander Dvorkikov, who previously led Russian forces in Syria, a conflict where human rights investigators say civilians were targeted and cities were destroyed. This general will just be another author uh, of crimes and brutality against uh, Ukrainian uh, civilians. According to the United Nations, more than four and a half million refugees have fled Ukraine since the war began. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. In case you missed it this weekend, a scary scene at a Home Depot in San Jose, California. Customers had to rush out of the hardware store after it caught fire. It was a big one. Take a look. This video posted on social media along with others showing the outside of the building. Look at that. San Jose FD says 35 people were inside the store at the time of the fire, and this is what it turned into. They all made it out safely. The fire got so intense, the roof did eventually collapse, and a nearby pet hospital had to be evacuated. As of now, the fire, uh, cause of this fire in San Jose is unknown. And another massive fire, this time in California, this one at the port of Menicia that broke out yesterday afternoon. Luckily, the winds blew the fire away from other nearby structures. Crews were able to douse the flames using a fireboat. More than a thousand taxiderm amounts of exotic animals worth more than $32 million is now in the possession of police after they were seized from a warehouse in Valencia. Police say it's one of the largest discovery of taxidermy animals in Europe. The seizure happened as part of a potential smuggling investigation. The animals, including rhinos, polar bears, even elephants, even includes more than 400 protected species like Bengal tiger. This investigation has been ongoing in Spain since last November. 438, about 69 degrees. And new details in the latest instance of legislation targeting LGBTQ youth. After the break, what you need to know about the Alabama bill. We're tracking traffic for you. Usually this time of morning, is still quite light out there. And a couple cars on the road. 1604 Pat Booker out there by Universal City in the Live Oak area. And there's 410 at Fredericksburg, a little bit closer to the medical center. And taking a look outside with a live cam. No jacket needed today. Very humid at 69 degrees, and some people had some rainfall. We'll be checking in with Justin a little later on. And new reaction this morning to Alabama's new restrictive transgender law is growing. Civil rights groups promising lawsuits over the new legislation signed by Governor Kay Ivey. ABC's Alex Fache has more. It's the latest instance of legislation targeting LBGTQ youth. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey signing two bills, one that makes it illegal to teach about sexual orientation and gender identities in grades K through five. The other bans transgender health care for minors. Anyone who violates faces a felony punishable by up to 10 years in prison. It was just a private journey going on between me and my family and my doctors. The new legislation's made 15-year-old Harley Walker feel like she has no choice but to speak out publicly. If I did stop my gender-affirming care, 
my physical outside would reflect on who I was inside. And that would like completely destroy me mentally and physically. To take away hope is to take away not just mental health, but physical health for so many innocent kids. Alabama State Rep Wes Allen, who sponsored a version of the bill, says this about puberty blockers and hormone therapy. The bill does not uh, prohibit mental health counseling. It just prohibits those powerful medications while the FDA hasn't approved puberty blockers for gender-affirming care, those treatments have been used for decades in very young children, but considered off-label. Alabama's law is one of at least three of its kind across the country. Legal battles over this one already in the works. Supporters of the new law says it's about protecting children. We don't want them to make these decisions at such as 11 and 12, 13 years old that's going to impact them years down the road. Parents of LBGTQ youth say there's a better path. Like any other dad, what I want is to see my kids happy. For me, that's helping Harley with her journey as a trans person. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 443, 69 degrees. And just ahead, a giant leap for space tourism. In your GMA First Look, we're going to talk about the historic launch to the International Space Station. In this morning's GMA First Look. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition, stop. Call it one giant leap for space tourism. That historic launch to the International Space Station. Soft capture complete. Sending three multi-billionaires along with a former astronaut to become the first all-private crew to the ISS. No pun intended, but out of this world. The full price is still a secret, but the three passengers are believed to have paid at least $55 million each for a seat on the SpaceX Crew Dragon with startup company Axiom Space. We understand there's a responsibility, and the responsibility is for this first civilian crew to get it right. And we'll tell you what's in store next for these private astronauts coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. And Holy Week is now underway. Catholics in Venezuela marked the start of Holy Week over the weekend. Several of them climbed the Avila Hill on Friday and came down only after harvesting enough plants for the rites of Palm Sunday. The 200-year-old tradition had been suspended the previous two years because of the pandemic. People can now see a rare African, and I think it's pronounced Bontebok, antelope calf at the Oregon Zoo. Tatula was born in February, now weighs 50 pounds and is pretty peppy pal. You can see him jumping around there. Bonteboks were once one of the most endangered animals on the planet with only 17 known to exist back in 1837. They're now more than 2,500. I'm gonna pretend that they're just called box. I think so, for okay. sure, yeah. of course. And check out this first for Brazil. Models from various tribal groups hit the runway in Brazil's first fashion show organized by indigenous groups. It showcased cultural attire and took place in the Park of Tribes, a venue that represents 36 ethnic tribal communities in the state of Amazonas. San Antonio Spurs wrapped up the regular season with a three game losing streak after they fell to the Mavericks in Dallas last night. Dallas last night. Final for American Airlines Arena. Mavs 130, Spurs 120. Good news last night's game had no impact on the Spurs playoff hopes right now. San Antonio is still in the 10th spot in the West and will take on the Pelicans in the play in tournament bracket. That game is set for Wednesday night, 8 30 at the Smoothie King Center. The winner will advance in the tournament. The loser will, of course, go home. And a quick look at the roads with Transguide out there, looking at I-35 in New Braunfels and I-37 at Jones Avenue. No problems, at least in the cameras that we see so far. Justin Horn is back now. And Justin, I've got to be honest, between yep. fishing Saturday and just kind of laying low yesterday, I didn't even know we had storms in the forecast, but I know we'll take whatever rain we can get at this point. We, we will, and it, unfortunately, it did come with a little bit of severe weather last yeah. night. We had some reports of hail here and there across the city of San Antonio, places like I-10 Days of Alla Road, maybe for up towards uh, 16 and 4 Bandera. Some reports of hail up to the size of quarters, so that would constitute a severe storm. Those storms across San Antonio have since moved out. That was around 11 o'clock or so last night, but we're still seeing some pretty hefty storms as you get up towards Austin, the Kyle area, Buda, just to the east of Mountain City there, moving towards 
uh, that uh, toll road 130. But moving out of our area for the most part, we are detecting uh, one little blip here on the radar north of Gonzales. That is quickly moving east as well. The atmosphere is set up to where if we see some storms today, they could be severe. But the, the problem is we have a pretty good cap. So I don't know that we're going to see much, but if we do see something pop up, we got to be careful because just like last night, we can see these storms go severe. Take a look at some of the observed rainfall over the last 24 hours. Places like Chavanel Park picked up 1.2 inches. That was the highest total I saw. But for the most part, we were in the range of about half an inch, San Antonio, a tenth of an inch to half an inch, and this was mainly northern Bear County. San Antonio International Airport picked up about two tenths of an inch. Same for Selma, New Braunfels, same story. Just a little bit of rain there in Seguin. As you go west, some places in northern Medina County saw some rain as well. And Kerrville overnight picked up a storm where they picked up about 14 hundredths of an inch of rain there. And you notice JBSA Camp Bullis did see a little bit of rain. That's fantastic news with the fire ongoing there. That should help along with the higher humidity today. That humidity is now way up there and that's helping to produce some cloud cover. 70 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 64. We still got a good south southeasterly breeze ushering in all that moisture. 67 in Kerrville, 69 Hondo, 73 Pleasanton, 72 right now in Beeville. A little closer in. We've got 60s and 70s for the most part. It's going to be a warm, humid day. Uh, the dew points, as we showed you, are well into the 60s, and that is sticky air. That doesn't really change much uh, because we're going to stay on the east side of the dry line. Here comes that dry line, by the way, around 6 o'clock. This model does not develop any storms. Again, there's a pretty good cap on the atmosphere, but if it is able to generate at least one storm, one or two storms, there is the opportunity for some uh, severe weather today. As we get into tomorrow morning, we're going to have a piece of energy coming in out of the southwest. That's going to produce some showers and I think a couple storms tomorrow morning into midday. So keep that in mind for the morning commute tomorrow. And then we have the dry line coming back in again, and this does want to develop more storms tomorrow afternoon. These would also have the potential to be strong to severe, so tomorrow afternoon is another time frame we need to watch. Uh, as we look at the uh, severe weather outlook today, just isolated does include San Antonio, so this is a low end risk. And as we get into tomorrow, we up it just a little bit for places north and east of San Antonio to more of a, uh, a scattered risk. Uh, tomorrow afternoon with isolated stuff here around San Antonio. Dew points, uh, they're going to be high today, but by Wednesday we get a front through here, drops off significantly. We're going to see very dry air, gusty winds again. Wednesday's a day I've got pegged for a high fire danger. Something else to keep in mind. Meantime, forecast today, 68, 7 o'clock. We're up around 76 by 11 a.m. And by 2, 3 o'clock, we're up around 85, 86. There is that 10% chance of rain. So it went. Here's the extended forecast. 30% chance of rain, showers and storms tomorrow. Windy on Wednesday, that high fire danger, probably leaking over into Thursday as well. Good Friday looks good. Weekend, Easter weekend for the most part looks good. Just a little warm, perhaps a little humid too. 93 Easter Sunday. Nice. You talk a lot about uh, drought updates and the drought situation that is looking pretty dire going into the heart of the summer, Justin. I, I, I'm imagining you would probably agree this fire danger theme is going to linger for some time to come. Yes, I'm I'm remembering 2011. This seems eerily similar. Uh -huh. 2011 was a really bad year for us, and this is kind of taking that uh, that same path. So right. yes, it's uh, it's going to be a problem. A dangerous narrative. All right, yep. Justin, thank you. 453, about 69 degrees. And just ahead, we're going to show you which movie raced to the top of the weekend box office. But first, pick three numbers this morning. 161, Fireball 8. Daily, four numbers. 8067, Fireball 8. Cash 5, 4, 15, 17, 24, 31. And Lotto, Texas, 28, 40, 42, 45, 52, 54. Your Powerball numbers, 6, 16, 31, 62, 66, Powerball 18, Power Play 2. Good luck. Oh, boy. It's a $71 million first place debut for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Oh, Lord, there are two of them now. That's a bigger three-day bow than the 2021st film and a new record opening for a video game adaptation. It also knocked last week's number one, Morbius, into distant second. There's something inside of me. Who wants to hunt? With just $10.2 million. Bucks. You are all going to have the greatest story to tell at dinner tonight. That's still better than the fourth place $8.7 million opening for director Michael Bay's Ambulance. 
Captain Marvel's joining the Fast and Furious family. At least that's what Vin Diesel announced with a pic of him and Oscar-winning MCU star Brie Larson saying she'll appear in Fast and Furious 10, due out in May of next year. Word is, Breaking Bad stars Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul will appear in the forthcoming final season of the spinoff Better Call Saul, debuting this month. An 80s pop star, Lisa Stansfield's 56 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And time now, 458 and 69 degrees for now. Head next half hour, Tesla CEO Elon Musk says no to Twitter. That story coming up in your morning consumer news. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuy. There's a look there at Loop 1604, Shanefield. And here's I-10 at Hackberry. Looks okay for now, but we'll be checking in with Steven Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Outside with live cam, morning low clouds, lots of humidity, and we do have some thunderstorms in our general part of the state. We'll talk to Justin in just a moment, see how our Monday and our work week is shaping up. Hope you had a wonderful fiesta this year, and good morning to you. It's Monday, April 11th. Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it was a nice weekend for fiesta. It all worked out. Like Justin said earlier, the rain held off until the end of fiesta. That's right. We could have had storms ruin any one of those three parades, and we got lucky this year. Yeah, it's pretty incredible how it worked out. I mean, it was beautiful for all the fiesta events, and last night, as just as things were winding down, we did get a little bit of rain. Some storms made their way through San Antonio. Some severe weather too. Had some reports of hail. That is all since pushed east. So if you're heading out the door this morning, work, school, you're just fine. Probably won't need the umbrella today. Chances are you won't. Outside chance for an isolated storm today. That's kind of the, the general idea. Let me show you the radar right now. The storms have pushed away. You see some activity up there around Bastrop. And uh, that is all moving east and out of our area. We've also got a couple of uh, showers and maybe a thunderstorm showing up there in eastern parts of Gonzales County. And then as you get into Lavaca County, seeing a couple of pop up uh, showers, those two moving off to the east. But San Antonio's in the clear. And as we head into later today, there's still a chance of an isolated storm or two, but it's it's low end. We're talking less than 20% chance here. Uh, but the message we do need to pass along that if by chance we do get a pop up storm, there's a likelihood that it could become severe. So that's what we have to watch a little bit later today. This area in pink represents the severe weather risk and it's low end, but it is there. As we look at temperatures this morning, 70 degrees, it's humid, it's cloudy here in San Antonio, 67 Kerrville, 70 in New Braunfels. We had that dry air over the weekend, not anymore. It's gonna be sticky next couple days. 70 in New Braunfels, uh, 74 stints and 72 down there in Castroville. In the forecast for today by noontime, we're up into the upper 70s. Clouds linger for a while. Then we get some sun this afternoon, which will allow us to get up into the upper 80s with some 90s showing up in southern parts of Bear County, 91 in Somerset. 90 in Elmendorf. So the roads have dried out for the most part. Stephen, are you seeing any incidents out there? No, not just yet, Justin. And you know, if you need some alone time, the roads are the best place to be right now. You can see basically <laughs> no one is out there this early in the morning. 1604 at Shane Field, quiet start to this Monday morning post fiesta. And listen, that's not a bad thing, especially if you are an overnight or early morning commuter. There's 35 in New Brothels may look a little bit busier there, but thankfully we weren't seeing any issues that would cause any problems for that drive time right now. However, keep in mind road debris was picked up here off US 90 westbound right there at Pin Road, not seeing it impede traffic because it is again very early out there, so not a lot of folks to see on the roadways. And that's what we're seeing as we get that wide look at the map at 504. Lots of green on the screen, so essentially you will have the roads to yourself, but keep in mind, take it easy. There's no need to rush, especially if you're traveling into San Antonio. These travel times are showing that right now, no delays just yet. Burning to downtown and those eastbound lanes of I 10, 24 minutes, 28 if you're traveling in from 281 southbound and Bulverde, so it's a little bit slower than usual, but not too bad. 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels on I-35 southbound. So no worries there. Again, quiet roads as how we're starting this work week. We're going to take a look at some construction spots and closures that will be coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. 
Thank you, Steve. And top stories this morning. Crews continue to work overnight to contain that massive grass fire burning at JBSA Camp Bullis since Saturday afternoon. And at one point, residents in parts of Fair Oaks and Bulverde neighborhoods were put under voluntary evacuations. Sarah Costa is live near Camp Bullis with the latest from out there this morning. Sarah? Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Stephanie. And those voluntary evacuations for the southwest part of Comal County were lifted yesterday. And JBSA fire officials say they don't believe that fire will actually spread or leave the campus of Camp Bullis. But let's take a look at that video from yesterday as fire crews work to contain the blaze. And here's the latest information we have from JBSA fire. They're saying now the fire is at 50% contained, spanning across 2,800 acres. There are no injuries and no occupied buildings or structures that have been damaged by the flames. Active service members on site have been moved to safe locations as fire response efforts continue. Now that fire began around 2.30 Saturday afternoon after it ignited on a training demolition range. The cause of the fire is still under investigation and further information is expected to be released in the next few weeks. An estimated 80 firefighters are still working that fire and are fighting it from above, dropping water to contain the fire in affected areas. Residents are urged to monitor fire updates from their local fire departments on social media and also the JBSA Facebook page. But here is the good news for today. As Justin mentioned it earlier, we have a lot more humidity today. The winds have died down and we did receive some rain in the San Antonio area overnight. Justin even said over some over the Camp Bullis area. And so all of these factors combined will hopefully hopefully help crews continue to fight that blaze. Live outside of JBSA Camp Bullis, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Other stories we're following this morning. A suspect is in custody after a deadly shooting in the Bronx, New York. And we're learning new details about a triple murder at a Grantville, Georgia shooting range. Both shootings part of a string of deadly gun violence across the nation this weekend. CNN's Cole Higgins has the latest. These guns are too easy to build, too hard to trace, and too dangerous to be on our streets. Just ask the family of that beautiful 16-year-old who was killed in the Bronx. Two days after a 16-year-old girl was shot and killed while walking home from school in the Bronx, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York is calling on the federal government to deal with what he calls an explosion in unregulated weapons. Police say the 17-year-old who was arrested Saturday for the shooting may have been using a ghost gun. A child that has zero police contact uh, at all and he goes from smoking marijuana to killing somebody. In Grantville, Georgia, the State Bureau of Investigation still working to find out who brutally murdered the owner of a gun range, his wife, and their teenage grandson this weekend. The store's been here for a long time. The range has been here for a long time. And there's people from all around come and shoot here. I mean, it's just not people from Grantville. Investigators say as many as 40 guns and the range's surveillance camera and recorder were taken from the scene. In Cedar Rapids, Iowa, two people are dead and at least 10 others injured after an early Sunday morning shooting at a nightclub. And in Indianapolis, police say a fight at a birthday party led to another deadly shooting. One person is dead and five others wounded. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. And the weekend violence comes as President Biden faces pressure to take more steps to address gun violence. Today, he may be announcing new firearm regulations. The regulations on so-called ghost guns, unregulated and untraceable weapons made from kits would help address a critical gap in the government's ability to track them. We're going to have more in our next half hour. A COVID outbreak in the president's inner circle has the administration once again stressing the importance of getting vaccinated and boosted. This is we are seeing a slow uptick nationwide in the highly contagious BA2 Omicron subvariant. At least 21 states and territories now have seen new infections climb 10% or more in just the last week. 14 states plus DC are seeing modest increases in hospital admissions. Several dozen cases have been linked to DC's elite gridiron dinner. President Biden did not attend that dinner and the White House insists precautions are being taken to keep the president safe, like with, uh, with regular testing. Remember, he's fully vaccinated, he's doubly boosted, and most of the time people who get anywhere near him need to be tested. 
President Biden intends to keep traveling. The White House says he'll travel more this month, including visits to Iowa and North Carolina this week. And time now, 5.09 and 69 degrees for now. Months after a hostage in Colleyville, a synagogue has reopened their doors just ahead. How they're healing and searching for people within their community. And taking a look outside with live cam, the humidity is back. 69 degrees right now. You won't need a jacket today. We'll be checking you adjusted very soon. Through paintings and heartwarming messages, Congregation Beth Israel in Colleyville is healing. Three sections of this was damaged by the police when, as they came into the building, the hostage rescue team. The synagogue was left damaged by gunfire. Inside, a lot has changed to uplift everyone's mood. By changing the carpet and changing the wall colors, that also helped a bit with the gentleman who had been involved with the incident. In January, a gunman held four people hostage for 10 hours. The suspect, Malik Fasal Lakram, was killed in the standoff. Cameras capturing the moment, hostages were finally able to escape. Those who were there during the intense moments now taking time to reflect. I am so excited to be coming back. We all are human beings, desperately trying to do the best we can in this thing called life. The more we can see that sense of humanity in each other, we can understand that our struggles are the same as your struggles. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. 514, 69 degrees. And coming up after the break, Pokemon Bread has a lot of people buzzing this morning. That's next in your morning Tech Bites. Hey, it's me. Your dry skin. We go through a lot every day and lose ceramides, my barrier needs, to seal in moisture. CeraVe facial moisturizers developed with dermatologists continuously deliver three essential ceramides to help restore my protective barrier so I can lock in moisture. With CeraVe, we can feel hydrated and look healthy all day. CeraVe facial moisturizing lotions from the number one dermatologist recommended skincare brand. You said that you would shave your eyebrow off oh. for a hashtag Klondike. Go, go. Oh! <laughs> what would you do for a Klondike? There's nothing better than... In today's Tech Bytes, no Twitter board seat for Elon Musk. Twitter CEO says Musk will not be joining the board after all, saying Musk decided not to join after becoming Twitter's biggest shareholder. The announcement was made after a storm of tweets from Musk criticizing the company. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 soared to the top of the box office, pulling in $71 million. That broke the record for a video game adaptation set by the original film just two years ago. Experts hope the success is a sign Families are ready to return to the theaters. And finally, a Pokemon craze, a new one sweeping across South Korea. People are racing to local markets and waiting for hours to get a hold of Pokemon bread. It's a snack that comes with a collectible sticker. There are only 100 packages in stock each day, so some people are leaving empty-handed. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. My favorite Pokemon was Snorlax because he was the one that would sleep a lot. So just throwing that out there. But if you are just waking up and getting ready to start your morning, well, we do want to show you how the roads are looking right now. 37 at Jones Avenue. The morning has been quiet, uh, but I did just receive some information about a crash over here up toward the northwest side, actually a little bit past uh, 1604. We can see it now on our map. I-10 eastbound at Lock and Terra Parkway. Uh, checking the trans guide cameras, there were some flashing lights out there for a little bit, but at the corner of my eye, looks like that may have cleared out. So that's some good news, especially as more people are going to be getting out there in the next few minutes. But make sure to plan your commute because there will be some road closures specifically happening here off Loop 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. Signal work actually. This is taking place starting today according to TxDOT and will last a full week up until April 18th. That's from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. Drivers keep in mind there will be an alternating lane closure on the frontage roads in both directions from Marbach Road to Bandera Road. So make sure to plan your commute ahead of time and get your phones out because we have that QR code. Scan this QR code and that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. I just updated a list of closures planned for the month of April. So that's all the up to date information and of course the latest on your morning commute. Justin. Thank you, sir. Snorlax. Snorlax. Is it? Okay. And Jigglypuff. Mm. <laughs>
Uh, you know, sleeping a lot sounds nice. Yes. Uh, some of us got woken up last night because we had some storms going on. Take a look at this picture in our case. I connect. This was uh, some of the hail that uh, came down in shirts. Some uh, short burst of about pea size hail. Uh, Texas USA tells us so this was the kind of hail we saw although there were a few reports up to quarter size which did prompt that severe thunderstorm warning and thankfully some rain too uh, out of that we uh, certainly needed that looking at live radar this morning everything has moved out of San Antonio but we still do have some activity from Bastrop over to Brenham that's moving out and then we notice uh, a few returns across parts of Gonzales County and Lavaca County just north of Howitzville seeing a nice cell there nothing that's severe but you, you may see some lightning and thunder, some brief heavy rain with this uh, also around Flatonia moving towards Schulenburg this morning. Uh, time lapse, we'll stop it right there at 11 o'clock. That's when that storm came through. You see the wet roads. Rain didn't last very long there at 410 and night then. And now we're just left with cloudy skies. Temperatures uh, in the 60s and 70s out there uh, around San Antonio. Uh, speaking of the rain last night, uh, Chavano Park, one of the big winners around uh, inch, 1.2 inches there. JBSA Camp Bull has picked up 500 some an inch, which doesn't seem like much, no, but it was over that fire, and any little bit of rain helps. Uh, hopefully that's going to help get that fire contained that's uh, still going this morning. And, of course, Sarah Costa is going to have more on that coming up in just a bit. Selma close to three-tenths of an inch, New Braunfels two-tenths of an inch, and some rain there across northern Medina County. So let's talk now in the forecast. 70 degrees here in San Antonio, 67 Kerrville, 69 in Uvalde, 70 out in Del Rio, 74 down there in Stinson. So it's a warm, humid morning. These dew points are in the 60s for the most part, and that puts us squarely in the muggy territory. It stays that way today and tomorrow. And will that lead to some storms? Well, I think today it's going to be a little tough. We have a cap on the atmosphere that tends to keep most of the storms at bay. But there is a dry line that's going to set up just to the west of San Antonio. Should that spark off a storm, and these usually aren't good at doing that, but should it do that, we could see a strong to severe storm. It's possible. Then as we get into tomorrow, this is what I think our best chance of rain will be. Tomorrow morning through about noontime. This is noontime right here. It shows some showers and storms moving through San Antonio. Hopefully we get some rain out of this. I don't think that though we would see much strong uh, weather with this just because it's so early. But as we get later into the afternoon, the dry line sets up again, and it's along that dry line should we get more storms to develop that I think we could see some severe weather. That's a possibility. Uh, and then we'll get some drier air in here on Wednesday. So isolated chances, some severe weather today in this area in pink. Tomorrow it expands a little bit, but kind of the same story right along that dry line. An isolated severe thunderstorm possible with better chances to our north and east. Uh, looking at the dew points, they stay high, stay high next couple days, as I said. Then they should, uh, that graph isn't right. The, the dew points drop off into low numbers on Wednesday, and that's when we have that fire danger. So the forecast for today, 78 noontime. We're up into the upper 80s this afternoon. It'll be warm and humid in the extended forecast. 10% uh, chance of rain today, 30% chance tomorrow. A little more confident tomorrow. Wind, uh, Wednesday, windy, high fire danger, especially in the afternoon. We've got to be really careful with the conditions we have. And Easter Sunday. Looking warm. All right, thank you. 523, 69 degrees. An Avenger is about to feel the need for speed in the Fast and Furious franchise. Details next in your morning spotlight. Quick look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, one, six, one, Fireball eight. Daily four, eight, zero, six, seven, Fireball eight. Cash five, four, 15, 17, 24, 31. And Lotto Texas, 28, 40, 42, 45, 52, 54. Your Powerball number is 616, 31, 62, 66, Powerball 18, Power Play 2. Good luck. An Avenger is joining the Fast and Furious franchise. Captain Marvel herself, Brie Larson, will be in Fast and Furious 10, due out in May of 2023. Franchise star Vin Diesel broke the news about the Oscar-winning actress on Instagram, writing, you have no idea how timeless and amazing she will be in our mythology. The Red Hot Chili Peppers are back on top. The band's new disc, Unlimited Love, has debuted atop the Billboard 200 Albums chart. It's their first number one album since Stadium Arcadium in 2006. Imagine all the Lennon 
has long resisted performing his father's iconic anthem, Imagine. But the 59-year-old artist made an exception, singing it as part of Global Citizens' Stand Up for Ukraine fundraiser. Lennon explained, I'm calling on world leaders and everyone who believes in the sentiment of Imagine to stand up for refugees everywhere. I hope someday you'll join us. Hollywood. I'm David Daniel. And time now, 527 and 69 degrees for now. We have more heading your way in our next half hour, including new details about President Biden's proposed gun regulations. Crews continue to fight that brush fire at JBSA's Camp Bullis. Good morning. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. The latest on that blaze. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at 69 degrees and it is humid out there. Welcome back, 5.30 on your Monday, April 11th. Happy Monday, thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Hope you got to enjoy some of Fiesta. Some of you saw a shower or storm in the last uh, 12 to 24 hours. Get an update now where things stand this morning with Justin. A nice wake up call around 11 p.m. last night. Storms came through some severe weather here in San Antonio, but thankfully some rain too. That's the positive side of it. The rain's moving out. Any storms that we have on radar really moving out of our area now around Bastrop and Brenham. A couple storms though north of Howitzville. We are noticing that here on radar. A nice little cell there moving east and another one right along I-10 there moving towards Schulenburg, but moving east and away from us. Could we see more rain today? Possible, but the rain chances really are pretty low this afternoon. Uh, we're not expecting much. Here is uh, the, the bad news with everything. Oak reached its highest number yesterday, 5,920. It's in the high category. Molds are up there too. We've got hackberry grass, mulberry. Uh, if you're an allergy sufferer, not a great time to be outside. 70 degrees at the airport right now, 67 Curville, 69 Uvalde. We're at 74 in Catula and places like Bulverde, 67. Bulverde, I know you've been seeing a lot of smoke from that fire. Should be calming down some. We have higher humidity, some rain overnight, which Sarah will tell you about there in Northern Bear County over JBSA Camp Bowles, helping with that fire situation there. Forecast, 69 by 8 o'clock. 76, 11 a.m., 78 noontime. We start to see more sun this afternoon. Pretty warm day, 88 degrees, and there is an outside chance for a storm. Should we see a storm, it could be strong. We're going to talk more about that. The potential for some more storms coming up tomorrow and then some uh, warm weather for Easter weekend, too. We have all that coming up in just a bit. we got to go over to Stephen now and talk roadways and morning commutes. How's it looking? Traffic is pretty tranquil right, right now. Justin 281 at Hildebrand. You can see not a lot of folks out there this early in the morning. And then again, if you are waking up and you have to head out the door, that's never a bad thing. But check out I-10 at La Quintera. Pretty dark out there. There was a crash that was reported a little bit earlier, but you can see now from these trans guide shots, lots of pavement out on the screen and lots of green on the screen as well. Not spotting any slowdowns just yet. The morning is still pretty young, so just take it slow out on the roads. It's the best way to go for a Monday morning or any morning that is. And great news is there's no need to rush out the door if you are traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities. I-10 westbound coming in from Seguin 29 minutes at this hour. 21 if you're traveling up from Lavernia in those northbound lanes of 87 and 27 minutes if you're coming up from Flotusville to downtown San Antonio. So 28 minutes now. But again, no need to rush out the door in the morning. It's pretty quiet right now on the roadways. There's 1604 at Pat Booker. But of course, we know that there are a few closures out out there to be planning for. We're going to have that information coming up a little bit later on in this newscast. Looks like something may be happening here, though, off 410 at North Ingram. We'll get to that in a minute, Mark. Thank you, Stephen. A storm that popped up overnight caught one man, especially off guard. San Antonio police say the rain swept him away from the area he called home. A homeless encampment near Highway 281 and Bitters. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. We understand police found him and the news is not good. Well, that's right. Police tell, that, tell us that when they found him, he was dead. They found him about three miles or so away from here. Now, they believe that he had been in, in a camp under a bridge along the drainage ditch here near Highway 281 and Bitters Road when he suddenly got swept away by the heavy rain. Now, when police got the call after 1130 last night, it originally was for a water rescue. They began searching the drainage ditch near Highway 281 and Bitters Road, but quickly realized the man was gone. 
police called in their Eagle helicopter to fly over the area. And they tell us that is how they found the man about 40 minutes later down near Wurzbach Parkway, not far from Jones Maltzberger. Now at that point, officers did recover that man's body, and it will be up to the medical examiner to identify him. Now, a little while ago, I spoke to a woman who told me she's pretty familiar with the homeless encampments in this area, and she says the area where that man would have been uh, has a very steep slope. She says even on a good weather day, she would be afraid that that was dangerous, and it seems that what happened overnight did prove her right. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Windy dry conditions over the weekend did not help crews fighting that massive brush fire. They ignited in a demolition area of Joint Base San Antonio Camp Bullis on Saturday. Heavy smoke and at one point flames in parts of northern San Antonio could be seen miles away. That's right. Sarah Costa live outside Camp Bullis with the latest on the containment of that fire, at least attempts to continue to get it contained. Sarah? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. So on Saturday, we had a red flag warning. It was pretty windy over the weekend. Yesterday, that wind did die down. But here's the good news. Like Justin Horde mentioned, we have a lot more humidity today. The winds have died down. And hey, we even got some rain over parts of San Antonio, including a little bit here at Camp Bullis. But here's the latest what we know from JBSA fire officials. They are saying the fire is 50% contained at this point, spanning 2,800 acres. There are no injuries and no occupied buildings or structures have been damaged by the flames at this point. Active service members on site have been moved to safe locations as fire response efforts continue. That fire began around 2.30 Saturday after ignited on a training demolition range. Now the cause of the fire still under investigation and further information is expected to be released in the next few weeks. Now at some point there were voluntary evacuations for parts of southwest Comal County. Those voluntary evacuations were lifted yesterday and JBSA fire officials say they don't believe this fire will spread outside of JBSA Camp Bullis's campus. Live outside of Camp Bullis, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Sarah, thanks for the update. 537 topping your other morning headlines today. The White House focusing on gun control. The president has a wish list of reforms for Congress. And as seen as Amy Kiley reports, a top priority appears to be cracking down on so-called ghost guns. President Joe Biden is expected to propose new gun regulations today. Three sources with knowledge of the situation say he's focused on regulating so-called ghost guns. People can put them together at home from kits, so they're hard to trace or regulate. Classifying some of their parts as firearms would change that. The effort comes as gun crimes have been rising in the U.S. with more shootings over the weekend. My heart goes out to all of those impacted by last night's shooting. This is another mindless and senseless gun-related incident a police source told CNN a ghost gun was recovered after Friday's fatal shooting of a 16-year-old girl in New York. The ba bad people who want to get guns for bad purposes realize this is the easiest way to get a gun. It's even easier than going on a street corner and paying, paying uh, someone some money for a gun. Also, as soon as today, Biden is expected to name his pick to lead the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. An official says the nominee is former U.S. Attorney Steve Dettelback. Biden says he also wants Congress to mandate background checks for all gun sales, ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines, allow gun makers to be found liable if their products are used in a crime and fund crime prevention and policing. But Senate Republicans have a history of blocking gun control efforts. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. 538, 69 degrees. And coming up, how some local teachers are using social media to help teach students about what's happening in Ukraine. And what's happening outside right now is you don't need a jacket. Very mild out there. 69 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Just as good update us on the forecast as it continues to track some storms that are generally east of Austin this morning. With no insight for the war in Ukraine, teachers here in San Antonio say they're teaching history as it unfolds. Lee Waldman has that story. My job to make sure that the information they have is accurate because there's no 
hiding in the in the social media age. Putin's war in Ukraine highlighted on social media apps like TikTok, easy for students to see. Victoria Bonner has taught at Jefferson High School for three years now. Her focus, AP Human Geography. I felt it was very important to discuss the issue in Ukraine because it's happening in real time um, as a history teacher. Since the war started, Bonner students have been asking questions, wondering what the ramifications will be. She's guiding discussions, directing them to reliable sources, teaching them the importance of fact checking. Our job as educators to make sure that it's accurate enough for them and that they can make their decisions and their choices based off of accurate information. A similar approach is happening in Northeast ISD. Meredith Birdie is the social studies dean at Churchill High School. One of our world history teachers, he's been opening every class with, with questions. He says he wants to kind of ease students' fears. Meanwhile, almost 6,500 miles away, millions of people are living the history Birdie and Bonner are teaching. Usually, uh, yeah, she said the entire Ukraine is not safe. Speaking through a translator over Zoom, a woman who left the dangers of Mariupol to a different area of Ukraine says her once beautiful city is now 90 percent destroyed. She's hiding her face and not sharing her name out of fear of being targeted by Russian forces. When you hear, when you see the bombings, the grenades, grad machines bombing the city, you understand that the, those, that military uh, equipment not only destroying the city, but also killing everyone you love. I asked her how she thinks this war will end. She's not sure, but she's scared. The this, this is the most horrifying thing that could happen, Putin invading the entire Ukraine. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. 544, 69 degrees. And just ahead, which movies topped the weekend box office and which ones fell short? That's next in your box office recap. Pick three numbers, 161, Fireball 8. Daily four numbers, 8067, Fireball 8. Cash 5, 4, 15, 17, 24, 31. And Lotto, Texas, 28, 40, 42, 45, 52, 54. Your Powerball numbers, 6, 16, 31, 62, 66. Powerball 18, Power Play 2. Good luck. The Batman fell to fifth place, but made another six and a half million dollars for a domestic total of 359 million. Ambulance opened in fourth place with 8.7 million dollars, the lowest debut of director Michael Bay's career. The Lost City checked in at number three. 9.2 million dollars gave the rom-com adventure a domestic total of 69 million. As a result of my procedure, I have an overpowering urge to consume blood. Morbius only managed one weekend to top the chart, falling to second on ticket sales of $10.2 million. I don't know how you got back, but you made a big mistake coming here. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 stormed out of the gate with a $71 million debut, more than the first Sonic film's debut in 2020, and opening weekend records for Jim Carrey and video game adaptations. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, with gas prices jumping 20% from February to March, businesses that rely on cars and trucks are looking for new ways to pay the bill. The Wall Street Journal says small businesses that handle the local deliveries for giants like FedEx are pushing the shipping companies to kick in more. And drivers for Uber and Lyft are demanding the rideshare companies put in more surcharges to cover the cost of gas. Well, car maker BMW says we likely won't see the end of the computer chip shortage until next year. Over the weekend, the CFO at Volkswagen warned it would probably be 2024 before a meet. They actually could meet that demand. Let's check on traffic right now at 548. Here is Mr. Stephen Cavazos. Oh, wow, what an introduction. Thanks, Mark Austin. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get a look at the roadways because they're looking pretty good right now. I'd say I tend to lock and Terra pretty quiet, but dark out there. We want drivers to make sure they are taking it easy this morning because there's really no need to rush. We're inching closer to that 6 a.m. hour with virtually no problems out on the road. But keep in mind, stalls are starting to pop up, though. 410 eastbound over here off uh, again in the uh, near Zazamora is uh, the latest one or the newest one to pop up in our map. So make sure you are driving carefully through that area. But we're going to take a massive 
jump up here toward I-10 just outside of Bernie. Another stall to watch out for there off I-10 westbound at Scenic Loop Road. So again, check those vehicles before you get out on the roadway and make sure that you plan your commute ahead of time because there will be some signage installation and of course some lane striping taking place off US 281 on the north side of, of San Antonio. Keep in mind, drivers, this does start today, Monday, April 11th, and will wrap up on Friday, April 15th. That's from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. You can expect an alternating northbound frontage road closure from Loop 1604 to Stone Oak or TPC Parkway. So make sure you plan ahead of time, but right now make sure you take it easy because virtually no problems out there to report just yet. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Good news. Well, at least there was no rain over the Fiesta festivities, but now we need it. We do in the worst way. I think we were a little spoiled for Fiesta. I mean, it was so incredibly nice. Hopefully next year it'll work out the same way. But yes, we do need the rain. We had some overnight. Some storms moved through San Antonio. Now some of that energy is trying to move east. New severe thunderstorm warning, not for our area, but I'll show you here. This is up around Bastrop. Nice little cell here and is probably producing some hail. Uh, the last uh, severe weather threat we were looking at here was indicating where you see that uh, Black color right there, some two inch hail just to the east of Bastrop. So I show you this uh, just to, to tell you that we could see a few more strong storms like this a little bit later this afternoon. The, the atmosphere is, is primed for it. With all that being said, the chance of seeing a storm popping up is generally pretty low. We've got dry conditions here in San Antonio right now. 70 degrees and cloudy. Dew point is at 65 and we've got an east southeasterly wind at about 11 miles per hour. Boy, it's humid, and uh, those dew points stay up through the afternoon. 67 in Kerrville, 70 in New Braunfels, Bulverde, 67. That's a place that's seen a lot of smoke last couple days. Uh, up around Fair Oaks Ranch as well, that smoke has settled down. Thankfully, that fire starting to get under control there around uh, JBSA Camp Bullas. And that's due in large part to some rain overnight and more humidity and, of course, all the work of the firefighters out there. 69 Canyon Lake, 68 Comfort, 66 in Bandera. I mentioned the dew points in the 60s. Very, very muggy and sticky. And I think we're going to see dew points like this today and tomorrow before the bottom drops out and we get some really dry air coming in on Wednesday. Well, let's look at the future cast. What can we expect today? Notice this model doesn't generate any rain. Uh, today and this is around six o'clock does show the dry line getting a little bit closer. Oftentimes dry lines are not good at creating storms, but if we do get a storm to develop right along the dry line today, it could be strong to severe. So we've got rain chances at about 10%. Just know that that threat for severe weather is there not only today, but also tomorrow. I want to fast forward to tomorrow morning. We get some showers and storms coming through here. Now I think most of this will probably stay sub severe, just some rain. And that's exactly, exactly what we need. A little piece of energy comes through. But as we get into Tuesday afternoon, the sky's clear and then we get the dry line again. And this may develop a few more storms tomorrow afternoon. These are the storms that I think could be severe tomorrow afternoon, something we need to watch. Um, as we go into Tuesday night, clouds fill back in and then it's Wednesday when that dry air starts to pour in. So the severe weather risk today, it's isolated, it's low end, but it is there in this pink color you see, San Antonio points northeast. Tomorrow, a little more widespread, but same idea. Isolated, uh, strong to severe storms. Hail, gusty winds, by the way, would be the main threats if we do see any pop up. Uh, temperature wise, 68 uh, upper 60s this morning, and then by noontime, 78 degrees. We jump into the 80s this afternoon once we see some sun this afternoon, and probably some 90s too. And those temperatures are really starting to ramp up. Seven day forecast 30% chance of rain tomorrow. Keep in mind the best. Chance for serene is going to be during that morning commute tomorrow. We'll be here to let you know what you can expect. And there is a small chance of a storm early Wednesday with a frontal boundary. But the big news on Wednesday is going to be gusty winds and very, very dry air. Some concerns about fire danger Wednesday afternoon. And then the moisture tries to come back in on Friday. We see uh, somewhat of a, a warm, humid Easter weekend. So a lot to look at there in the seven day forecast. Very spring like for sure. Mm -hmm. And we'll be watching for that chance of storms today and tomorrow. Fiesta check, Good Friday, almost check, and then almost. Easter, and wow, yeah. here we go. It Things went are quick. racing by. Yes, they yeah. are. We always talk about that. It's amazing. Yeah. 554, about 69 degrees. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy. There's a look there at Highway 281 at Hildebrand. Things looking good there. And at Loop 410 and Babcock Road. We'll be right back. 
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, Ukraine bracing for a major assault by Russian forces in the east. Thousands are looking to flee. We are there live, and you'll see it right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, parenting is not an easy job, but we'll tell you about some common mistakes you can avoid to help make the job a little bit easier. And a scary scene for baseball fans in D.C. after shots ring out following a Nationals ball game. We're going to tell you if anyone was hurt. And a homeless man is dead this morning after being swept away by water from last night's thunderstorms here in the San Antonio area. We will have the very latest. Crews will have much better weather conditions as they continue to fight that massive brush fire burning inside of JBSA's Camp Bullis. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. What JBSA fire officials are saying about how this fire started. New evidence, Russia is gearing up for a new offensive. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington, coming up where Putin is moving his troops. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. It is humid out there. We don't see any rain in this shot, but Justin is telling us that there might be a slight chance later tonight and overnight. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Hope you had a great fiesta and a wonderful weekend, although it was on the windy side uh, out there. It is Monday, April 11th. Thanks for joining us today. Happy Monday. Uh, yeah, a little on the windy side, but Nice overall. I woke up this morning. I was telling Justin as we were starting out the morning newscast that uh, there were some sprinkles on the truck this morning. We did have some rain in the overnight hours. There were some storms, some loud mm -hmm. storms that came through. Thankful for the rain. Mm -hmm. We did get a little bit at the airport, so that kind of ends our streak of, of dry days temporarily. Uh, we do have a few more storms out there right now. Most of these are east of San Antonio, and we're not expecting any rain this morning. So the morning commute is going to be just fine. It's this afternoon where we could see one or two pop up. I think our better chances of rain are going to show up uh, tomorrow. And even then, it's not, uh, not a great chance. Uh, there are some stronger storms off to our north and west. Well, last night, we did get, some, did get some rain in spots across northern Bear County. Chavano Park, one of the big winners, 1.2 inches. Airport saw about two tenths of an inch. Same for Selma, New Braunfels. JBSA Camp Bullis, around 500 of an inch. Not about two tenths of an inch, too. So you can see kind of the stretch here where that storm came through. It did drop a little bit of hail in some spots, too. 67 Kerrville, 74 right now in Catula. We're at 70 in San Antonio, 67 Helotus, 68 Rio Medina, 69 over there at Randolph on the east side of. Uh, San Antonio and the forecast calls for temperatures to be up around 78 by noontime today. And we'll top out in the upper 80s with some 90s on the map once we see some sun this afternoon with that small chance of a storm. Let's we'll talk about tomorrow's forecast and then some very dry air works in on Wednesday, which could pose some issues too. seven day forecast is headed your way in just a bit. Let's get over to Stephen now and talk roadways and traffic and hopefully good news my friend. Oh yes for a Monday we have good news Justin if you're at home getting ready to head out the door in the next few minutes no need to chug your coffee that's not a good idea anyways but I 10 West at UTSA Boulevard things have been looking great this morning out on the roadways haven't seen any issues that would cause a problem or any delays for drivers that need to travel in the next few minutes but make sure that it is you are driving carefully out there both hands on the wheel let's take a look we do have a stall still hit reported here off 410 East there at Zazamora. It hasn't been causing any issues, but as a friendly reminder, make sure your vehicles are working properly before you head out on the roadways. It is still dark outside. Let's get that look at the map 602 this morning of the metro area. Lots of green on the screen and you saw it on those trans guide cameras. Lots of pavement as well, so just make sure that you, you're giving drivers plenty of room out there. There's no need to really head out the door and rush to get to work or drop the kids off at school this morning. And if you are traveling into San Antonio, it's a pleasant drive from Pleasant on I-37 northbound, 28 minutes to downtown, 90 eastbound coming in from Castroville, just 19 minutes, 16 minutes, a little time from Lytle on I-35 northbound. No rush there, but uh, 6, uh, 6 a little bit after 603, not seeing any other issues reporting just yet. It's very quiet this morning, unusually quiet, but we're keeping our fingers crossed that it does stay that way. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say an overnight storm has taken a toll on at least one person. A man who they say was swept away from a homeless encampment has been found dead. Trina Weber is live near 281 at Bitters, the area where he was when he disappeared. How did he end up in the water? Do we know yet, Katrina? 
Well, police believe that he was camping out under a bridge in this area when the heavy rain washed him down into the drainage ditch and then carried him away. Well, officers responding to a 911 call after 11.30 last night began searching this area. When they had no luck, they called in their Eagle helicopter. Police say it was with the help of that chopper that they were able to find the man, and when they reached him, though, he was dead. That man floated about three miles or so away to the area near Wurzbach Parkway, not far from Jones Maltzberger. The police have not released any information about the man to identify him. It looks like it will be up to the medical examiner's office to make that positive identification. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. Well, the big story over the weekend continues to be a big story this morning. Smoke could be seen for miles regardless of where you live. Bear, Comal, or Kendall counties. If you look towards JBSA Camp Bolas, as crews continue to fight a brush fire. That fire broke out on Saturday afternoon, and Sarah Costa is live outside of Camp Bolas. Sarah, what are JBSA fire officials saying about how this all started? Good morning, Mark and Steph. So here's what we know. There was a red flag warning on Saturday. It was very windy when JBSA did say that there was an authorized training mission happening in a demolition area inside of Camp Bullis when that fire broke out. 2.30 Saturday in the afternoon. Now, yesterday during a press conference, we did ask exactly what that training mission involved, but they declined to say because of an ongoing investigation and information from that investigation won't be available for a couple of weeks. Now, officials do tell us they believe they will be working the fire for the next 24 to 48 hours. So the latest information from JBSA fire officials is that the fire is now at 50% containment spanning 2,800 acres. There have been no injuries and no occupied buildings or structures that have been damaged by these flames. Now, active service members on site have been moved to safe locations as fire response efforts continue. Now, those voluntary evacuations for residents in the southwest parts of Comel County that were issued on Saturday were lifted yesterday, and JBSA fire officials say they don't believe the fire will spread outside of Camp Bullis. And like Justin Horn said earlier, the weather conditions much more favorable for those crews that are fire uh, that are fighting those flames. You know, the wind has died down significantly. We have a lot more humidity in the air today and we even got some rain overnight and some of that rain even over the Camp Bullis area. So hopefully those conditions will help those crews as they continue to fight that fire. Live outside of Camp Bullis, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. On to the war in Ukraine, where Russian forces are moving closer to the east, where Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky expects a renewed assault. Meanwhile, a show of solidarity from one of the European Union's leaders, ABC's Ike Jachi, is in Washington this morning with more. Good morning. New images show Russian troops moving in a convoy eight miles long, a new attempt to take control of the east. This morning, evidence of a renewed Russian effort to control the east. New satellite images showing a massive military convoy of tanks, mobile artillery, and other vehicles eight miles long. It's going to Kharkiv, a city that's already faced weeks of Russian shelling. Military analysts say Russia is preparing for a major offensive in the coming days. In his daily address, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says we are preparing for their actions. We will respond. Speaking to CBS, Zelensky said he was grateful for President Joe Biden and the military aid, but he's not confident that his country will get everything it needs. Meanwhile, a show of solidarity over the weekend. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson visiting Zelensky in Kyiv. And this morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin appointing a new commander in Ukraine, General Alexander Dvorkikov, who previously led Russian forces in Syria. This general will just be another author uh, of crimes and brutality against uh, Ukrainian uh, civilians. According to the United Nations, more than four and a half million refugees have fled Ukraine since the war began. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. 
And some other top stories we're following. Four people recovering after a shooting outside of the Nationals Ballpark in Washington, D.C. Police there say the shots were fired less than an hour after the conclusion of Saturday's game with the New York Mets. Two adult men and a teenage boy and girl were struck by gunfire. All four are expected to be okay. Right now, D.C. police are offering rewards of up to $10,000 for anyone who can provide information that leads to an arrest. And listen to this, more than 1,000 taxidermy mounts of exotic animals worth more than $32 million are now in the possession of police after they were seized from a warehouse in Valencia, Spain. Police say it's one of the largest discoveries of taxidermy animals in Europe. The seizure happened as part of a potential smuggling investigation. The animals include rhinos, polar bears, and even elephants, even included more than 400 protected species like Bengal tigers. A COVID outbreak in the president's inner circle has the administration stressing the importance of getting vaccinated and boosted. We are also seeing a slow uptick across the country of the highly contagious BA2 Omicron subvariant. At least 21 states and territories have seen new infections climb 10% or more in the last week. And 14 states plus Washington, D.C. are seeing modest increases in hospital admissions. Several dozen cases have been linked to D.C.'s elite gridiron dinner. President Biden did not attend that dinner, and the White House insists that precautions are being taken to keep the president safe like regular testing. Remember, he's fully vaccinated, he's doubly boosted, and most of the time people who get anywhere near him need to be tested. And as many Americans are looking to return to some sense of normalcy, so is the president. President <clears throat> Biden intends to keep traveling. The White House says he will travel more this month, including visits to Iowa and North Carolina this week. Ten minutes past the hour, about 70 degrees. And much more, much more to come on GMSA, including a new Pokemon craze in South Korea. We're going to tell you what some people have been rushing to get their hands on. And time is running out. If you haven't filed your federal income taxes yet, we've got some tips to make the process a little less overwhelming. And a quick look outside with live cam. It will be warm today, but right now, humid at 69 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back and good morning. It's 614. All right, you are here and tax day this year <laughs> is here the 18th. So if you haven't filed already, now's probably the time. Yes, it is. And sometimes the hardest part is just getting started. Here's ABC's M. Win with what you'll need to get the ball rolling. The window to file your federal tax return is closing. Doing your taxes can be super overwhelming, but if you can put, invest a little bit of time in the pre-work, setting yourself up for success can go a very long way. Start with your personal identifying information. Like the social security numbers for every family member, their dependents themselves, a copy of their driver's license, their bank account numbers, the routing numbers, make sure that information is correct. Next, gather any documents that show your sources of income. The W-2, which is what your employer sends you, showing how much income you made. If you are self-employed, then you should be getting a 1099 from different sources of income that you may have done. These documents will be delivered to you in the mail, or you may be able to access them online by logging into your workplace portal. And if you earned interest on your bank accounts, that needs to be reported to the IRS too. If you log in, you go to your account, you go to the tax documents tab, the, your bank will prepare a statement for you if there's a need. If you make $73,000 or less a year in adjusted gross income, you can file online with free tax preparation software through the IRS website. If you make $58,000 or less, you may qualify to visit a volunteer income tax assistance center. And it basically offers pre-tax preparation to taxpayers who don't make a lot of money, taxpayers who are not very fluent in English and need help. To find a volunteer income tax assistance center near you, go to irs.gov slash VITA. MWIN, ABC News. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter's CEO says Elon Musk will not be joining the board after all, saying Musk decided not to join after becoming Twitter's biggest shareholder. The announcement was made after a storm of tweets from Musk criticizing the company. 
Sonic the Hedgehog 2 soared to the top of the box office, pulling in $71 million. That broke the record for a video game adaptation set by the original film just two years ago. Experts hope the success is assigned families are starting to return to theaters uh, as the pandemic winds down. And a new Pokemon craze is sweeping across South Korea. People are racing to get to local markets and wait for hours to get a hold of Pokemon bread. So it's a snack that comes with collectible stickers. There are only 100 packages in stock each day, so most people end up empty handed. 617 on your Monday morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos to see how our roads are looking. Looks like we may have a new problem. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second off of 410 at Austin Highway. I was just checking the corner of my eye and saw some flashing lights out there. But right now, other shots of Transguide are showing a pretty easy commute. 37 at Goliad. You can see really not a lot of folks out there at 617. So the morning has started off pretty nicely. The week that is. And again, that's a good way to get the morning going, especially if you are an early morning commuter. But be on the lookout. We we still have this stall off Loop 410 eastbound at Zazamora. That has been there for a little while, and we have a new one that popped up over here off of 410 westbound at Austin Highway. Now, that is where I saw those flashing lights, but I will find out some more information and give you those updates as the morning does go on. But make sure you are planning your commute. Again, as a reminder for our friends out toward Kendall County, there will be a three-week closure that started last Monday, but again, we can expect that to wrap up sometime in early May, according to TxDOT. That begins at 9 this morning. Keep in mind, the westbound entrance ramp from Bandera Road will be closed. Traffic in the meantime is being directed down to the eastbound frontage road. So plan your commute ahead of time. And I just updated a list of closures that are planned for the month of April. So make sure you have your phone handy right now. We're going to keep this up for just a moment. You can scan this QR code and that will bring you to the case at traffic page that has a list of closures in your area. And of course, the very latest on your morning commute. Guys, yeah, I'm glad they left it up for a second because yeah. even, the, even the quick draw. Yeah, uh, you know, you, you, it takes a second for your phone to kind of pick up the yes. image. It yeah, does. so it's good to always remind people we're going to try to push this uh, yeah. for the rest of the week. So always if you're waking up with uh, watching GMSA, make sure you have your phones handy around this time because we will put this QR code up and that'll give you a list of closures. And of course, that's a good way to plan your morning. Of course, some people are knocking stuff off the nightstand right now <laughs> trying to, to find their phones. Their phones. I know, just, and then we have our phones like right here with us. And sometimes it takes us a while to, you know, to it does. scan it yes. in. Thank just, you, Steven. Don't knock the coffee over. We don't, won't. No, don't do it. <laughs> no. Isn't technology incredible? Yeah. It, it blows is. my mind. It's it cool it stuff. Anyway, uh, kiddos heading off to school today. Uh, a lot of kids had a three-day weekend. A bus stop this morning is going to be warm. You don't need a jacket. It'll be a shorts and t-shirt kind of day. Cloudy and humid this morning, 68 degrees. And then this afternoon, we're up around 86 degrees. So expect a, a warm afternoon. It'll be that way really most of the week. We are headed into our warmer weather uh, as we get later into April. Uh, I want to show you a picture. This comes from our uh, KSAC Connect. That was the hail last night. We did have some larger hail around quarter size hail reported in a few spots around Live Oak uh, and in parts of North San Antonio. But this is out of shirts about pea size hail here. So those were that's what some of those storms produced overnight. You look at the radar right now. A lot of the rain now pushing east and away from our area. We're not detecting anything here around San Antonio. But real quick, I do want to show you the Aquifer is dropping down into the upper 640s now. The 10 day average is still technically above 6, 650, but we'll see where it lands today. We are probably on our way into stage two restrictions, even with that rain last night. Don't know that that's going to do a lot for the aquifer. Doesn't really change much. We're still once a week watering. Depends on your address, of course, but it changes from 7 to 11 a.m. and 7 to 11 p.m. Once SAWS updates us and uh, they put that out there, we'll certainly let you know. Cloudy skies right now. We've got uh, 70 degrees at the airport. East, southeast, Julie winds at about 10. Very humid conditions. Dew point is in 65. And most of the dew points here around our area in the 60s right now. And it will stay fairly humid this afternoon, especially if you're San Antonio and points east. Temperatures 70 at the airport, as we said, 69 New Braunfels, 67 Boulevard, 68 Canyon Lake. And our forecast for today, dry line does move in from the west. Probably doesn't generate much in the way of rain, showers, or storms. But if it does, there's an opportunity for one or two strong storms. Right now, we have rain chances at 10%. But that rain chance increases tomorrow morning. This is around 7 a.m. In between, I'd say, uh, the morning time and midday, we should see some showers and maybe a few storms work through. Not expecting a lot of severe weather during this time frame. It's during the afternoon, as we get towards, say, 5 o'clock tomorrow, 
along the dry line. Then we could see a few more storms develop, and these will have the potential to become strong to severe. Uh, and then we'll get some drier air in here on Wednesday. Today, the risk of severe weather isolated. This pink color, that's where we could see one or two storms pop up that could be strong. Tomorrow, the area is a little larger, but similar idea. The uh, potential for some strong to severe storms. A little better chance, though, as you work north and east, more scattered here around San Antonio. I'll call it isolated chance of severe storms tomorrow. Dew point tracker. High dew points, relatively high next couple days, but it drops off Wednesday, and that's another danger. Fire danger showing up Wednesday afternoon. Gusty winds, very dry air, something we got to watch. Forecast for today, 71 by 9 a.m., 78 noontime. We're in the 80s this afternoon. Partly cloudy skies, just a 10% chance of rain of some storms later this afternoon. We'll go 93 tomorrow. Windy, 30% chance of rain. Those rain chances do go up. Fire danger Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, as we said, along with some windy conditions, 87 Thursday, and a little more humidity as we head towards Easter weekend. At this point, looks like it's going to be fairly warm. Temperatures in the 90s, both Saturday and Sunday. Thank you, Justin. While Fiesta was going on, you may have heard us talk quite a bit about our KSAT Insiders Party we had at the Praise. And if you'd like to join our Insiders program, you can do that now. And coming up today on GMSA at night, we're going to have a digital journalist that will be joining us to talk more about the KSET Insiders Program and what's it about and how you can join. That's later this morning on GMSA at 9. We'll be back. What can I do with less asthma? With Dupixin, I can do more. <laughs> Catching my train. Making moves. <laughs> Making a connection. Oh, a train connection. That's how you do more with Dupixin, which helps prevent asthma attacks. Dupixin is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Dupixin can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Dupixin. In this morning's GMA First Look, that historic launch to the International Space Station that sent three multi-billionaires and a former astronaut into space, making it the first all-private crew to the ISS. More on that coming up at 7 a.m. right here on KSAT 12. Short block, 626 now, just about 627, 69 degrees. And still to come on GMSA this morning, parents out there know it's one of the hardest jobs in the world, and that's why we're going to have some tips to help make that task a little easier. And we'll have very list on that big fire that's been burning most of the weekend and into this morning out in far north Bear County. And another look there at the roads with Trans Guy. There's a look there at I-37 at Goliad Road and at Loop 1604 at Pat Booker Road. Things on those cameras looking okay so far, but we will be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Fire crews continue to fight a massive brush fire happening inside of JBSA Camp Bullets. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. What JBSA officials are saying about the possibility of that fire spreading outside of Camp Bullets. And speaking of outside, lots of humidity, some low clouds. Some of you are saying, hey, it rained last night. Other people watching right now going, it rained? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's Monday. It is April the 11th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Monday. This one, I'm one of those people. It rained? And I, I didn't hear I didn't the know. and I'm far north side and I didn't hear the storms last mm -hmm. night. I know we had some pretty good thunder bumpers last night, as I like to call them sometimes. And thunder bumpers. You've yep. been tracking some east of Austin this morning. Some of those look like they've been pretty hefty. Yeah, there was a severe storm earlier up there around Bastrop. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the storms we saw last night here in San Antonio did reach severe levels. We had some hail with them. So uh, that really is moving east. We've got uh, just cloudy conditions right now. So if you're heading out the door, you don't have to worry about thunderstorms here in San Antonio. If we're going to see any today, it'll probably be this afternoon, and it's just going to be an isolated storm or two. But yes, it was a little bit loud last night. If you were on the north side of Bear County, you can kind of see the path here of where that storm came through. Dropped some good rain around Chavano Park, Colotus, over to Selma, and then towards New Braunfels. The airport did pick up two tenths of an inch, so that is encouraging. But if you were on the 
Uh, south side of Bear County, unfortunately, no rain. We're hoping next couple of days there, there's an opportunity there. We just obviously don't want to see the severe weather. So that's kind of the line we walk here this time of year. Uh, pollen count from yesterday. Oak was at its heights level so far this season, 5,920. Molds, moderate, hackberry, grass, mulberry, all there. We'll get that pollen count in here in about an hour, and we'll pass it along to you once it comes in. 67 degrees in Kerrville, 69 in Braunfels, 68 Rio Medina, 72 in Castroville. It's a warm, muggy morning. We're going to keep things pretty muggy throughout the day. 71 by 9 a.m., 78 noontime. We're in the 80s by 1 to 2 p.m., partly cloudy skies, and we top out in the upper 80s. Just a small chance of a thunderstorm, 10%. Those rain chances come up tomorrow. We'll look at that future cast for you. Let you know when you can expect some rain on your Tuesday. In the meantime, roads are dry out, but do we have any accidents out there? Let's check in with Stephen. Yeah, unfortunately, Justin, at 632, we have a stream of lights here off US 90 at Loop 410. And of course, those flashing lights, which doesn't necessarily mean anything good. A crash has popped up here off of uh, US 90 Loop 410 is a view from Transguide. But I want to take a moment to take a look at this shot here because you can see that traffic at this moment is moving through there pretty slowly at this hour. Now, it's not clear exactly how many vehicles are involved or if those drivers experienced any injuries. But we know that drivers that are making their way through there will definitely see some delays. Let's go ahead and take you to the map because I have a wider look so you can start to see that buildup along Loop 410. We have that pinpointed right now in the northbound lanes of 410 at Latigo Drive. Not a place you want to be right now. This popped up maybe a few minutes ago, so we're going to have to look for some alternative routes for drivers that may have to head through that area. It's unclear how long it's going to take to clear that out. But let's go ahead and take up a drive up here to 410 westbound at Austin Highway. We do have a stalled vehicle still reported, so again, now, watch out whenever you see those flashing lights out there. The good news is, although we are seeing slow down, slowdowns, that is, along 410, we're not seeing slowdowns if you are traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities. However, for our friends up toward Bulverde, keep in mind, 29 minutes in those south family lanes of 281. But the big problem is going to be right here off of US 90 at Loop 410. We'll find out what's going on there, and again, we'll look for those alternative routes. That's coming up in the next few minutes. Guys. Stephen, thank you. Top story this morning. Crews continue to work overnight to contain that massive brush fire that's been burning of a JBSA Camp Bullis since Saturday afternoon. And at one point, residents in parts of Fair Oaks and Bulverde neighborhoods were put under voluntary evacuations. Sarah Costa is just outside Camp Bullis with an update. Sarah, what is the latest as of 630 this morning? Hey, good morning, guys. So those voluntary evacuations that were uh, made on Saturday. They were lifted yesterday for parts of southwest Comal County and also JBSA officials are saying they don't believe that this fire will actually spread outside a Camp Bullis. But here's the latest with what we have so far from JBSA fire. The fire is now at 50% containment spanning 2,800 acres. Now residents in these outside areas are urged to monitor fire updates from their local fire departments on social media, especially the JBSA Facebook page as the situation is fluid and of course right here on air and online at KSAT.com. So there are no injuries and no occupied buildings or structures that have been damaged by the flames. Active service members on site have been moved to safe locations as fire response efforts continue. An estimated 80 firefighters are still working the fire Sunday and are fighting it from above, dropping water to contain the fire in those effective areas. Now the fire began around 2.30 p.m. Saturday after it ignited on a training demolition range. The cause of the fire still under investigation. We do know that it was a red flag warning on Saturday and it was an authorized training mission in that demolition area, but further information is expected to be released in the next few weeks. Here's the good news, what Justin Horner, meteorologist, has been saying all morning. Significantly way less windy today. We have a lot more humidity in the air and hey, there was even some rain that fell over the San Antonio area and here on Camp Bullis. So all of those conditions will help those crews fighting to contain that blaze today. Live outside of Camp Bullis, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. All right, thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police say they have recovered the body of a man who was swept away by heavy rain overnight. Yeah, that was right here in San Antonio. He, they found him about three miles away from where he fell into a drainage ditch. Katrina Weber is near Highway 281 and Bitters Road with a live report. And Katrina, we understand that is the area where he disappeared. 
Well, that's right. Police believe that man was in a homeless encampment under a bridge not far from here. And they say it seems that that heavy rain caught him off guard. Well, the 911 call that brought police to this area after 1130 last night was for a water rescue. But in less than an hour, it became something different. The recovery of that man's body. Police believe that he was swept off his perch under a bridge near Highway 281 in Bitters by the heavy rain, then carried down the drainage ditch all the way to Wurzbach Parkway. When police found him, they say he was dead. The police had been searching this area on foot, but they came up empty handed. They say it was only after they brought in their Eagle helicopter that they were actually able to locate that man. And again, about three miles away from here. It's up to the medical examiner now to identify him. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Katrina. Also new this morning, police trying to piece together an early morning shooting on the city's north side. This all unfolded around 430 this morning. Officers say a man in his 20s drove himself to the hospital after he was shot while driving, possibly in the Harmony Hills area, not far from 281 in Blanco. At this time, officers don't have any suspect. We have no word on the victim's condition. And some other top stories we're following this morning. Some people in a far west side neighborhood are back home after evacuation orders were issued because of an hours long standoff. This all began on Saturday night at a home on Star Glade near Petranco Road. And that's where Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says a 22 year old man barricaded himself inside the home after getting into a physical altercation with another family member. Now, the sheriff also says he was armed during that incident. Yesterday, negotiators and SWAT team members were able to make contact with the man and take him into custody. Murder charges for a woman accused of self-induced abortion are being dropped. This new information coming from the Star County District Attorney. In a statement, they said, in part, quote, the issues surrounding this matter are clearly contentious. However, based on Texas law and the facts presented, it is not a criminal matter, end quote. Star County DA is expected to file a motion to dismiss those charges today. Happening today, the White House is focusing on gun control and President Biden has a wish list of reforms for Congress. Three sources with knowledge of the situation say he is focused on regulating so-called ghost guns. Those are firearms people can put together at home from kits, making them harder to trace or regulate. And classifying some of their parts as firearms would change that. Also, as soon as today, Biden is expected to name his pick to lead the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. New details out of Russia. Mil military officials there say they have destroyed a shipment of air defense missile systems provided to help Ukraine. Meanwhile, European Union foreign ministers are meeting to talk about the effectiveness of their response. The EU says further sanctions against Russia are always on the table. So all comes a big concern about Moscow's preparations for a major attack in eastern Ukraine. Look for the latest on this story coming up next on Good Morning America. And with the ongoing war in Eastern Europe, students on social media apps like TikTok and Instagram are able to see people live in Ukraine or Russia. And it's basically history unfolding on their phones. So local teachers want to make sure the information that they're seeing is accurate. You can see how they're doing this right now on our website at kset.com. With gas prices still on the rise, businesses that rely on cars and trucks are looking for new ways to pay the bill. Wall Street Journal says small businesses that handle local deliveries for giants like FedEx are pushing the shipping companies to kick in more. And drivers for Uber and Lyft are demanding more surcharges to cover the cost of gas. And car maker BMW says we likely will not see the end of the computer chip shortage until next year. The CFO at Volkswagen recently warned it probably will not be until 2024 before computer chip supplies can meet demand. Baby formula still in short supply in many areas. Continuing supply chain issues and a recent recall have left nearly 30% of popular brands sold out, which is forcing some stores to limit formula sales. Time now, 640 and 69 degrees for now. Being a parent, no easy task, but there are some common mistakes that you can avoid that might make the job a little bit easier. That is ahead here on GMSA. And welcome back at 644. So parenting can be both rewarding and challenging. In fact, a survey conducted back in 2018 found 88% of respondents say being a parent today is harder than ever. And while raising kids is never easy, there are some common mistakes you might be able to avoid. Here's David Sears. You want to go high? How would you rate your parenting? My kids have all told me that I'm awesome. 
so I'm gonna go with awesome. I probably could have spent more time with them. I'd say a nine. Nobody's perfect, right? According to a Pew Research survey, about half of parents think they're doing a pretty good job at raising their kids. Experts say you can improve your parenting skills by avoiding toxic mistakes. The first, saying yes to everything. Studies show overindulging can lead to kids who have a sense of entitlement and less empathy for others. Another mistake, minimizing their feelings. Instead of saying, don't be sad, try, I see that you're feeling sad now. Then ask what would make them feel better. Another common misstep is saving your kids from failure. Kids will never learn perseverance if they aren't given the opportunity to fail. Expecting them to be perfect is another mistake. When you set the bar too high, it can lead to self-esteem and confidence issues later on. And David adds, experts say not introducing your kids to volunteer work is a missed opportunity. Research shows that kids who volunteer are more successful in school and are more likely to graduate from high school and college. Well, it's 645 right now on your Monday morning. Go ahead to check back with Stephen Cavazos. Unfortunately, this situation has not improved. Mark, Stephanie, let's get a look. US 90 at Loop 410. We still have traffic that virtually looks like it's at a standstill right now. It almost looks like we're looking at a string of lights there along 410. And that is because a crash was reported earlier this morning. We're already starting to see the impact, especially now we're entering morning rush at 646 with some issues over here. 410 northbound at Valley High Drive is where the crash is now being pinpointed at. You can see that huge stretch of red that's just continuing to build. So not necessarily a place you want to be, but if you have to head up toward 90 or maybe a little bit further up on 410, we do have a detour here for you. It's still early enough to where you can exit Old Pearsall if you are heading northbound on Loop 410. Keep in mind, this could change within the next few minutes or so as traffic continues to build in these northbound lanes. But if you need to head there and right now, the best thing to do is exit Old Pearsall early. That way you can get onto Military Drive and then get on a 90 or, or, or avoid that crash on 410. Uh, so, but wide look at the map does look like we are starting to get a few more problems in terms of congestion, but nothing too major just yet. We're seeing it over here off the northwest side on 1604 and along State Highway 151. So make sure to drive carefully. Of course, we're going to be monitoring this crash throughout the morning and give you those updates. Let's check in with Justin Horn. Thank you, Stephen. After what was a beautiful week and beautiful weather for Fiesta, we had some storms last night, some of which were severe here in San Antonio. Those have all pushed east now. We've got quiet conditions, albeit a little cloudy here in San Antonio. His humidity has really pulled in here. If you look at the time lapse, fast forward to about 11 o'clock, that's when we had those storms come through. You see some of the wet roads. Didn't pick up a ton of rain at the airport, but we did get some in places around uh, northern Bear County. Did get some decent rainfall last night with some of these uh, showers and storms that moved through. As we get into this morning, again, just cloudy skies and uh, temperatures are sitting in the, the 60s and 70s right now. Dew points are also very high. We've got upper 60s, very much in a muggy territory. And what I'm going to do is put this into motion here. We're going to go forward in time to about 3 or 4, 6 o'clock this afternoon. And we can see sort of a dry line setting up here. That's something we got to watch. On, the west side of the dry line, you got dry air. On the east side, you got very humid air. San Antonio probably stays on the humid side of things, but it's along these dry lines where you can occasionally get a storm or two, and that's what we're going to watch for this afternoon. In the meantime, 70 degrees here in San Antonio, 73 Pleasanton, 67 Kerrville, and you'll find mid to upper 60s here across uh, northern Bexar County, 64 Bernie State, 67 in Bull Verde, and 68 up in Comfort. And all that smoke, by the way, we've been seeing from that fire at Camp Bullis calming quite a bit yesterday, even more so today. So hopefully less smoke for those folks up there across uh, Kendall County and southwestern parts of Kamau County. Here's what our future cast looks like. That dry line pulls in. This model does not show any rain today, but I still think there's a shot at that. Just a 10% chance of a stray storm tomorrow morning. Morning commute. We could start to see a few showers, even a thunderstorm as we get towards midday. That time frame is probably our best shot at some rain. But as we get into the afternoon, sky's clear. Here comes that dry line again, and it gets close enough to San Antonio where we could see one or two pop up storms, and these will have the potential to be strong or severe. Uh, rain chance is probably a little bit better tomorrow. Then after that, dry air moves in on Wednesday, and then we have to start worrying about fire concerns again. Severe weather risk today, low end, but it is there. You see the area in pink, San Antonio points north and northeast. And then tomorrow, pretty similar area, although chances just a little bit higher as you get up towards Canyon Lake and up around the Austin area, scattered uh, to isolated severe storms possible. 
uh, by the afternoon. Temperature wise today, we're in the 70s by noontime, upper 70s, 78 degrees here in San Antonio, and then by this afternoon, upper 80s. It'll be a warm one, some 90s on the map too. I think we go partly cloudy this afternoon. Extended forecast, 93 tomorrow, a little warmer, windy, 30% chance of rain, small chance early Wednesday morning, and then that front comes through, fire danger Wednesday afternoon, windy and very dry, 87 Thursday, moisture tries to come back in Friday, and we'll see more clouds, and it will be warm for Easter weekend. Highs in the 90s. Some schools are out for Good Friday. Is Rudy yes, in school? Yes, she'll be off Friday. Off Friday. Yeah, a lot, yep. of, a lot then, of schools are. And then yep. Easter Sunday. If you're planning on brunch somewhere, get those reservations now. Oh, yes. Justin, thank you very much. 650, about 69 degrees. And using the phone while you're behind the wheel may not seem like a big deal. However, it is more deadly than you might think. That's tomorrow on GMSA. Our San Antonio Spurs wrapped up the regular season last night with a three game losing streak. They fell to the Mavericks in Dallas final from the American Airlines Center. Mavs win 131-20. Good news, last night's game had no impact on the playoffs as we speak. San Antonio is still in the 10th spot in the Western Conference standings and will officially take on the New Orleans Pelicans in the play-in tournament. That game is set for Wednesday night, 8.30 at Smoothie King Arena. The winner will advance in the tournament. Loser goes home. Go Spurs, go, come on. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 69 degrees humid and expecting maybe some showers later on. We'll be right back. Caught off guard and swept away. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say that's what happened to a man in a homeless encampment when heavy rain came through late last night. The officers were called here after 1130 last night to Highway 281 and Bitters Road. They immediately began searching for that man. They believe that he was camping under a bridge when heavy rain washed him into the drainage ditch, then swept him away. With the help of their Eagle helicopter, police found him about 40 minutes later down near Wurzbach Parkway. But all they could do was recover his body. The man was dead. Well, the medical examiner is still working now to identify that man. Reporting from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 410 at Ray Ellison, our friends at Trans Guide showing us a different view of this massive backup. We're calling it a super delay right now because you can just see traffic right now, bumper to bumper and not looking good. Not a place you want to be. You can see that crash off northbound at 410 Valley High Drive is where it's pinpointed. Still early enough no, though to exit Old Pearsall and get onto West Military. That way you can avoid all that mess or if you need to get on a Highway 90, this is going to be your best chance. But we know that that could change within the next few minutes. Justin. Stephen, thank you. Cloudy skies this morning. We'll see some breaks this afternoon. Partly cloudy conditions. Just a small chance for a storm later today. 88 degrees, your high temperature, southerly winds 5 to 15, and it will be humid most of the day. Tomorrow, a little better chance for some showers and storms, especially early in the day, and then some isolated stuff in the afternoon. We got some much drier air on Wednesday. That means a high fire danger and some warm weather as we head into Easter weekend. You all have a great Monday. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is next.